everyone. Uh, who here has been to Shanghai? Quite a few of you, non surprisingly, for uh, the Vancouver population. Whether you have been there or not, some of you might recognize the city you might be from, have been living in or visited uh, on the pictures in the slide. This is Shanghai, the center of economic growth and commerce. It is truly the city of contrasts, where old buildings stand alongside new and fancy skyscrapers, where the old culture, traditional culture, and uh, new phenomena interact. But most importantly, it's not only the buildings and uh, the neighborhoods that interact, but alongside the pockets of wealth uh, in the central business district, uh, on the, in the business district of Shanghai, what you also see is clusters or pockets of poverty. And this is the neighborhood which could be classified as a slum neighborhood. It's the area that I was living in during my first visit to Shanghai. You see, I majored in economics and minored in China studies. So during my undergrad, I got to spend two summers living in China, in Shanghai, Beijing, and a few other cities, uh, learning about the language and the culture, but also doing summer schools on urbanization in Asia. So combining this personal interest and experience with my perspective as an economist, uh, as well as my newly gained knowledge of uh, urban geography during my master's at UBC, I'm trying to combine the personal experience and more of an academic perspective to get a better understanding of what slums are and how rapid urbanization occurs in developing countries, which has been fascinating me since it's quite different from how it happens in Europe or specifically Russia, where I'm from. And when we think of the slums in the developing world, I want you to not just picture uh, the areas or the buildings as you see on the slide, but to also think about the people living there, the people and the vibrant community and the local economy that are going on in these areas. Now, if you hear the word urban slums, what do you think about? When asking upper level geography students in the class, they really think about a lot of the negative phenomena that are associated with that, citing poverty, how the communities could be dirty, uh, informal and marginalized, thinking of them as overcrowded, and not thinking that often about the human spirit or the sense of community that occurs there. On the other hand, people who visit slums, while they still observe that communities might be dirty or overcrowded, they also report the busyness and the vibrancy of the community and the thriving entrepreneurship, how people are friendly and industrious. And this really emphasizes more of the positive aspects and the aspirations of people living there, not just the problems associated with that. Uh, now, I've mentioned slums a few times, and what are they exactly? According to the UN Habitat's definition, slums are areas where their residents lack access to one or more of the following basic amenities, such as access to improved water, sanitation, sufficient living space, or durability of housing. And what I would like to talk about today is whether we focus on those negative things, or maybe slums can actually create opportunities for their residents and not just trap them in poverty. Slums are really prevalent around the world, with one in every four people around the world living in areas which would be classified as slums. This is a truly a high and astounding number. And when you think about it, mostly this occurs due to rapid urbanization and fast migration of rural residents to urban areas. People who want to escape rural poverty and starvation in some of the villages and try to pursue economic opportunities that are offered by the cities. Now, this is not, China is no exception to this phenomenon. And as of 2017, over 200 million people who are classified as rural migrants were living in Chinese cities. Just to give you a sense of comparison, it's six times the entire Canada's population. Of course, at urbanization occurring so fast with such high numbers of people coming into the cities, lack of infrastructure or proper, proper governance could lead to issues and these people not being able to fully integrate into the urban societies due to a number of reasons. And what this means is that they're not just migrating to the cities in general, but they often find themselves first in the slums where housing might be cheaper and easier to access for newcomers to the cities. Now, we are mentioning that there are some problems associated with the slums. And why does that occur? The thing is that while economic activity is quite vibrant and the communities are strong, 
Slums are indeed associated with some of the social problems and negative pheno phenomena associated with them. It could be crime and violence as well as public health hazards, poor quality of housing and lack of access to basic urban services that leads to uh, exclusion, social exclusion or economic exclusion of their residents, and informal employment or even high rates of unemployment in some of the cities could in the long run lead to a poverty trap where the recent migrants coming to the cities, staying in the slums, are actually prevented from pursuing improved economic opportunities and better education for themselves and their families. Does this occur? Does the poverty trap uh, exist for all of the slum residents, or are they able to lift themselves out of poverty? While evidence is not that uh, pre prevalent and we lack sufficient data about this phenomenon, there are several very promising trends that we observe in the developing world for slum residents. First and foremost, the share of people living in the slums has been declining in the last 25 years. For example, in China, it declined from almost half to just a quarter of population living in slums. In India, it declined from way over half to about a quarter as well. And in Brazil, as an example, the share has been declining, as well as in a lot of other developing countries. Secondly, economic growth really offers us a promise of better conditions for slum residents and them being able to move out of the slums and in regular housing. This is evidenced by the fact that in higher income countries, better de higher developed countries, we see that much fewer people living in slums. And you can see this on this graph where we truly observe that high shares of people living in slums are only indicated in the lower income countries, whereas while countries develop nationally and economic growth occurs, it leads to the fact that countries become, oh, countries are able to offer better housing and more economic opportunity for slum residents. And China is no exception to this either, with, as I told you, about a quarter of people living in slums and continuous economic growth, there's really a lot of promise for what awaits um, in the future for current slum dwellers. Furthermore, as I was saying, slums truly offer this high density community and social connections that some of their residents are able to capitalize in and they create clusters of entrepreneurial activity and a vibrant and formal economy whether it be on the local markets or recycling industry or small scale trade and there are further evidence to this from other cities for example in a long term study of rio's residents living in slums the researchers find that there is a lot of upward mobility among slum dwellers over time who are able to move into better housing and pursue economic opportunity through social capital and community engagement, capitalizing on that community that they find in the slums. A large share of people are also able to uh, get access to regular housing, meaning that they become owners as well as renters of better accommodation elsewhere in the city outside of the slums. And most promising is the finding about intergenerational mobility which means that even if the current generation of slum residents might not be able to move out and pursue better economic opportunities or education, their children are able to do so. And in this study, they find overwhelming evidence that children of current slum dwellers have a higher level of education and are able to find higher paying jobs in more qualified and higher skilled occupations, which really offers this other promise that by coming into the cities, rural migrants are able to offer a better future for their children. In the case of Latin America overall, there's also evidence that demonstrates that slum upgrading, or basically investing money into current slums to improve the existing uh, residents and the existing dwellings living conditions, actually lead to positive outcomes and improved well-being of the slum residents. What this means is that not only can we enable people to move out of the slums and into formal housing, but even the current housing conditions could be improved with proper governance and infrastructural investment. Also in Brazil and India, there's other research that shows that entrepreneurial activity among slum residents could also lead to them improving their economic opportunity and their living conditions. China, again, is no exception. And one of the very interesting examples in China that I would like to present to you is the recycling and informal trash picking or informal waste management industry. This picture you see on the slide and a few pictures I'll show later 
show that cluster of uh, recycling and waste management that was in that area that I was living in. And what is striking about it is that in Chinese cities overall, up to 1% of people can be employed in this industry informally, but yet they collect or they manage up to a third of the city's waste. In Shanghai specifically, the income of trash pickers and people involved in this informal waste management are comparable to the city's average income levels, which means it provides people with an opportunity to improve their living conditions, to save up and provide better education for their kids. And this could be uh, demonstrated by the striking example uh, which was published in the Financial Times article in 2015. It's talking about a woman, Cao Xiu Zhen, who is a semi-literate woman, moved with her husband from a small village to Shanghai, not be being able to write, being barely able to read uh, bits and pieces, but the parents are able to put their son through education system and provide him with an opportunity to pursue higher education. And at the time of the article, with his semi-literate parents, he was pursuing graduate school in economics in the city of Shanghai, which clearly provides him with way more opportunities in life than his parents were ever able to achieve. And this informal sector in the city is what enabled them to do that. And you see this high concentration of, waste, uh, recy of recycling and waste management, and it really emphasizes how much effort people are putting in and the opportunities that they're pursuing. Not only in the slums, but all around the city, you see the residents, you see different people with their small bicycles and carts collecting huge amounts of recyclable materials. And when you look at this picture, what this really emphasizes to me, this picture of a young woman carrying the cargo several times the size and probably the weight of her, is the struggle and the promise of cities. People do have to put an immense amount of effort into being able to make it for themselves and for their families. Yet it is also the promise. As escaping rural poverty and starvation, they're able to access the city services, provide education for their children, and achieve a better, a better outcomes in life for themselves and their families. And when you think about slums after this talk, I hope that you don't just think about the dilapidated housing, poor living conditions, or overcrowdedness, but you think about the people. And remember that slums are human communities. They're places that people call their homes. They're places where the human spirit exists, exists and often thrives. And it is truly about the people who are trying and aspiring for a better future for themselves and their children. And I would like to end with this quote by leading urban economist Edward Glazer, who is saying that cities don't make people poor. They attract poor people. So what we need to focus on is creating more opportunities for residents in slums for them to be able to lift themselves out of poverty. And it is truly about that. It is about the people. And I hope that you won't stigmatize slum residents just based on the fact of where they're living. We're all individuals with our unique identities, and we all have something to learn from each other. Slum dwellers have just as much to contribute as any one of us. But it is up to us to design and advocate for policies that enable everyone in our societies to thrive. And whatever ideas or solutions we have for slums, we need to include slum dwellers in those solutions as well. Thank you.